It's chicken and dumpling time, y'all. <laughs> yes, it is. I know I made this with y'all before, but I love talking to y'all and y'all love talking to me, so I thought I'd get on here. Um, I've been doing quick and easy meals for a while, getting ready, our taxes ready, and uh, now we can cook. We can cook slow. Yes, we can. Um, y'all see Mr. Chicken? He's just chilling out. He's going to go in the hot tub. <laughs> I'm just being silly. I used to do that when I was a teenage girl. I'd put him in the hot tub like that. Silly, silly, silly. I know. So I've already washed him and I've got him in my big stock pot to him. I'm going to put y'all right on top of it so y'all can see the action, okay? Alright, to our clean washed chicken, we're going to add two teaspoons of salt. And I use iodized sea salt. It's what I love to get right in the pot we need a good bit of salt that's the big old chicken and i've got this melange of peppercorns and i don't even bother grinding pepper i just stick the whole peppercorns in here see how they're all different colors you can just put some black pepper whatever kind you want and then i've got two stalks of celery because your dumplings you want to have a celery flavor and when to do better to get that flavor in there is in the stock, right? And then we're going to just cover him, Mr. Chicken, with some water. I have a little more. There we have it. Now he is just covered, just like that. He's going to boil for about one and a half to two hours on the stove till he's just falling off the bone and our stock has condensed. He's just a boiling, guys, and I flipped him over after about 30 minutes, and I'm going to let him do a low boil like this on the other side for about 30 minutes or maybe an hour. Just just whenever I get back to him, he'll wait on me. While our chicken is boiling, I want to go on and get my dumplings ready, and I can put them on a pan, and I can slide them in the refrigerator, and they'll be ready for me to put together this evening. That's what I love about making these dumplings. This little recipe is the recipe my mama taught me, and she taught my little sisters too, and this is what we grew up eating were these dumplings. And I've only changed very little, and that's at the end, I add a little butter and a little milk. Other than that, this is my mama's dumpling recipe. Um, so I just want to share it with y'all if y'all haven't seen it before, and if you have, you can still stay and we'll do it again together, okay? <laughs> Okay, y'all, I am going to make a double batch today. That way I don't have to mix them up twice. Um, usually I'm using less flour, but today's a double batch. So I've got three cups of all-purpose flour going in my bowl. I finally got me a big old bowl we can all work with. <laughs> and to that, we're going to need some baking powder. And I'm using Clabber Girl, and I'm going to do four teaspoons of baking powder. One of you saw my cheat sheet here one time four teaspoons written up there i had done that and it wasn't for dumplings it was for something else that's one two three four there we go and to that i want one teaspoon of salt so you can have all this back down if you want to make one recipe of my mama's chicken and dumplings but I'm going to double this recipe. John and I will eat this leftover another night. We sure will. We just love them. I believe this is John's all-time favorite. And I hadn't told him I was making this today, so he's going to be pleasantly surprised. Yes, he is. Y'all see, I just whisked that around to get everything incorporated so I won't have a clump of salt or baking powder. To this, I want to add one cup of chicken broth and I just used a canned chicken broth or some you might have frozen in your freezer because our chicken is still boiling right now. But if you wait till your chicken's boiled, you're going to have some fresh chicken broth or stock, either one. Then I'm using uh, vegetable oil. You can use corn oil. And we're going to have, let's see, that broth I told you was one cup. This is four tablespoons of oil. One. Two three of course the recipe is going to be in the description box on youtube so if you don't want to write down you just go to that description box on youtube and there it will be guys 
just like that and we're just going to start bringing it together like this our tender little dumplings Oh yeah, that broth gives it a real nice flavor, your dumplings. If you do not have any chicken broth on hand while your chicken is boiling and you want to pre-make these, you can use milk. Just use you some whole milk. I have many times and it works just fine too. I just love the flavor that this chicken broth gives. Now it's time for our hands. The, the utensils God gave most of us the best ones, huh, is our hands. I'm just going to kind of bring this dough together just like that. Get all those dry parts with all the wet parts so we can turn this out onto this work surface and cut us some dumplings. Just like that. Perfect. It's nice and tender. It feels so good. Okay, y'all. I'm going to split mine in half so we can work with one little batch at a time. And I'll get this turned out onto the board. And let's get working. First thing I'm gonna do is kind of dust my pan so my dumplings won't stick to it, just like that with some of our flour. And we're gonna dust our rolling pan too, just like that. Put him right there. All right, and I did make a double batch, so I'm just gonna cut mine in half. That way it's just a little easier to work with on our work surface. Right here, make sure y'all, I'm just making sure y'all can see me. I'm gonna dust this, make sure your work surface is very clean. Y'all know I clean mine with vinegar on here on this wooden surface and I love that. It dries, it doesn't matter if there's a residue because it doesn't harm us, so I love to use vinegar, white distilled vinegar. There we go, put a little bit of flour on top and I'm just gonna push it out a bit with my hands and then I'm gonna begin to roll it. Just like that and I'll turn it as a roll. One time, and I tell this story every time because it's precious to me. As it gets sticky, you can just add flour. You're not gonna hurt a thing. Oh, uh, my oldest son, Blake, he used to love to get in the kitchen and help me. And you know, this looks like something that's fun as a child, and it is fun. So he would come in there and he'd say, Mama, you want me to roll out those dumplings for you? And I'd say, sure. Well, he did one time, and I always tried to encourage my children if they wanted to help me. I didn't critique them or tell them how horrible they were doing it or they weren't doing it as good as I was, you know. I just dealt with whatever they did to encourage them and tell them what a great job they did. Well, I noticed he was rolling those dumplings out really thin, lots thinner than how I did. Y'all see, I just keep turning it. Well, <laughs> I thought to myself, it's getting sticky. Just add a little flour. Amy, it's not going to matter if our dumplings are a little bit thin tonight. Won't hurt a thing. We're going to let him roll them. I'm not going to discourage my oldest boy. He was wanting to help me. So Blake did them just as thin as he could. He just rolled and rolled and rolled. Well, lo and behold, y'all, those were the best dumplings we'd ever had. <laughs> so my, my son, Blake, ended up teaching me something. He taught me to roll them out as thin as I can get them. Y'all see, I've been rolling and rolling telling y'all that story. Well, Blake taught me that. And it is fantastic. So these are, Blake has added to this recipe too, my son Blake. Okay, y'all, this is where the pizza cutter comes in. It doesn't matter if your ends are not even or whatever because these are dumplings and they're gonna all go in a pot. So y'all see I'm doing them. I have never measured that. And y'all wanna know the width. These dumplings are about one to one and a half inches. Okay, guys? And I do not measure that. I just cut. Cut away just like this. And then I'll come along and you can cut them in half or you can cut them smaller than that. These I'm going to cut in half and these I'm going to do in thirds. You can do squares. You can do them as long as you want. Dumplings 
dumplings don't care as long as they make it into the pot. And you see what I'm doing here. Just laying them out here so they can stay apart. And they kind of do well because they'll dry out just a little bit. And I'm going to slide these in the refrigerator waiting on my chicken to boil so I can do other things. I love that too. All right, y'all. And in between, layer and another layer just give you another dust and a flower just like that to keep everything from sticking. And now I'm going to roll out my second batch. A little more flour. These are easy, easy, very forgiving. You can use those store-bought dumplings that you put in here with this recipe. I have done that in a pinch. Yes, I have. And my mama has too. And those are good. There's all kinds of brands. Mary B's is one of them. And mm, there's more. But yeah, you can do that. My mama even got where she would shorten it sometimes and use flour tortillas. Um, you can tell the difference in that, but it'll work. But it's not these dumplings. <laughs> My sisters and I did not like that, that little shortcut. No, we did not. But we ate it and didn't say a word. That's how we were raised. You eat it and you don't say anything. All right, I got to get these blake thin. Blake thin. <laughs> One more time this way. You will be ready, buddy. This is very comforting. And when you're eating on the go and running quick meals, sometimes you just want to stop and have a comforting meal, don't you? I know it. It feeds our soul, not just our bellies. Zip, 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 zip. And zip, and zip. Use my bench scraper. I bet I'll pick up a few more. Sometimes you can lay them crisscross. Crisscross applesauce if you want to. Just like that. Whatever you do, and you don't even have to cover these. You can just put these right into the refrigerator, just like this. And we'll see them again when we're at the pot of boiling chicken stock, won't we? When it's about go time. <laughs> and I also wanted to tell you I'm wearing your apron, girl. I love it. Janet from East Texas sent this to me. And it's actually like a terry cloth towel apron. Y'all see how pretty it is. It's gorgeous. And seriously, you just pop it on like that. No ties, no fuss, no nothing. Just on. And what I love about it, like during making dumplings, you can literally wipe your hands on it and just throw it in the washing machine. And when I put my dumplings in here in the refrigerator, I got some flour on my handle. So all I did was just like that. So I just want to send you a shout out, girl. I love it and I'm using it. I put my other one down in the candy kitchen so you'll see it later this year. <laughs> hey, y'all. It has been just about an hour, maybe a little over an hour. I've been doing other things, letting Mr. Chicken cook, letting him cook. Woo! Trying to get him out of there in one big scoop. And he's trying to fall apart. He's so tender, which is just what we want. And all our celery and our peppercorns down in there, I'm going to strain. So hang on just a second. I like to use a big, wide mouthed pot, I guess, to do my dumplings so I have more work surface to drop dumplings. But if all you've got is your stock pot, you can do it in here too, okay? So no sweat. Let me find my strainer. Strainer. My pot's still really hot. You see that chicken? He's steaming up between the two of us. <laughs> or between all of us, I should say. Let him cool for a minute before we debone him. There we go. That, that gets our chicken stock just 
Nice and clean. Got every, all the little giblets out of there. Perfect. We're just going to, I just go in first and I peel the skin back because I want just the chicken, no skin, no bones. And I'm just going to start separating these pieces out and see if I can get these breasts out on my cutting board. Make sure none of the cartilage or any of the gristle get all that cleaned off. That's what I'm doing. I usually, I like to use my fingers. That's the easiest way to feel for all that, but this chicken is hot, guys. It is hot. And the sun is going down. we got to get these dumplings in the pot. <laughs> so, I'm going to do it with a fork. Yes, I am. I mentioned I was deboning chicken for something else not long ago, and I mentioned that oysters on their back, the backbone. It's got the two chicken oysters. And so many of y'all knew exactly what I was talking about and said that's your favorite piece too, and y'all eat it while y'all are deboning too, and I got so tickled. That's like a little cook's little secret, huh? Our little secret pieces, two of them, and I love them. The puppy dogs, every time I go to deboning the chicken, it's like they know because they are right at my feet. That piece of chicken's got one of those peppercorns stuck on him. Get yourself off. I don't want somebody to bite into a whole peppercorn. <laughs> it softens them. You can chew it up, but it'd be a little bit on the spicy side, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Okay, y'all. You see what I'm doing. I will see y'all back shortly. And we will be over at the stove. And we will put all these dumplings in that pot and get them cooking and yummy. Yummy time. Maybe John will get here sometime or another and we can give him some blessing. I know y'all love that and so do I. We didn't always do that when we were first married. We didn't even pray together. Isn't that something? I just prayed by myself and he prayed by himself. But um, through the years, we begun that and I dearly love it. Dearly, dearly love it. I love praying with my whole family. I sure do. Sure do. Okay, y'all. I brought this chicken broth to a boil. Chicken stock. Chicken stock, Amy. I always say in broth and it's actually stock because we cook the bones in the chicken, right? That's about the only difference. And stock's got a little deeper flavor and some more nutrients in it because of the bones. There we go. It is a rolling boil and that's what we want. And we're going to start dropping our dumplings right in here. And they're going to drop to the bottom. And then as they start to get done, they will come back to the top. So try to drop them in different places so they won't be sticking together. See how he just came to the top? He, he was one of the first ones that went in, wasn't he? Just like that. So now I'm going to let this catch back up. See how it's starting to catch back up and roll and boil again? That's what we want. Now y'all see why I like a bigger wide pot to do this because I got more dumpling work surface, right? Yes, I do. Now we can drop more. Just like this. I kind of like to go down by the sides and places I know that there's not a little dumpling in there. He looks like a good little spot. Just like this. I'm going to continue this and I'll come back on here. When, they get, when the pot gets so full you can't find a spot to put it in, you just do that and it'll drop down to the bottom and come back up. So you just kind of part the, part the chicken stock and drop that dumpling. Just like that. Just gets a little bit more difficult to get them in there. Drop him to the bottom. Drop, drop, drop. In this process, I made a double recipe. It hadn't taken me five minutes altogether to do this, okay? So no worries, you can get it together. You know, you can make your dumplings the day before and just leave them in the refrigerator. Um, you sure could. 
You could boil your chicken the day before. You could just boil chicken parts if you don't want to do a whole chicken. And I do have a, one of these recipes where I make this lots quicker with some shortcuts. And we'll have to do that one time because they're going to be good chicken and dumplings too. We always don't have time to just get in the kitchen all day long, do we? But we can still feed our family good, so... All right, I have dropped the last dumpling, guys, and what I'm going to do is let this cook for about five minutes, okay? That's letting all my dumplings get done, and then we're going to add our chicken back. They have been cooking nicely for about five minutes since we dropped that last dumpling. I'm just making sure no dumplings are sticking on the bottom. I don't believe I feel any sticking. And I'm going to turn this fire down really low, okay? Because at this point, that's when they'll possibly stick very easily. So we're going to turn this fire down really, really, really low. We do not want to do all that hard work and then our, our dumplings burn, huh? Now we're going to add all this chicken that we deboned. And I chopped it into bite-sized pieces. Add it in here. There we go. And to that, I love to add some fresh ground pepper, a good bit of it, and a few tablespoons of butter. This is where I veer off my mama's recipe. This was her dumplings. This is where, <laughs> leave it to me. I'm gonna add some butter. Leave it to me, I'm gonna add some calories. But this makes them taste so good. And I'm going to add some milk. And I just do a nice pour like that. Y'all see that? And that also gives it a creamier, richer flavor, you know, and just kind of brings it all together. Just like that. And at this point, on low, very low, I'm going to let them sit and wait on John to get home. Hey! <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let them sit too pretty light. I've got a burner over here that's even lower. And they're gonna sit right there. And when John gets home, we'll ask him to say the blessing over our dumplings. And then we're gonna, we're gonna take a bite. Yes, we are. Checking on my dumplings, guys. Waiting on John. He called me and I didn't get to answer right away. And when I called him back, I said, sorry, baby, I was deep on the chicken. I was gonna surprise him. And it just slipped out. So a few minutes later, he texted and he said, Are you making chicken and dumplings? <laughs> so I gave myself away. I was going to surprise him tonight. But anyway, he, um, he'll enjoy it just as much. But I kind of gave myself away. I was going to record it when I surprised him with chicken and dumplings. But I'm still going to get him to come on here and ask the blessing over these dumplings. So I'll see y'all shortly. I've got my cornbread ready to mix up. I've got my dry ingredients in my... Uh, wet ingredients so when you mix them they start you know activating so I'm waiting on that because I want it to be fresh when he gets home and I got just enough time to get outside and close up my chickens and count all the cows and I will see y'all in a little while woo wee <laughs> man what you woo wee in the woo wee I see them dumping sitting nowhere <laughs> I had got these out to take a picture of them and they're nice and cool down won't you come why don't you come taste them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need a little tasting. They need some tasting, see? Yeah. Ooh, man. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Mm, let's see him. Let's see him? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Piece, piece of dumpling, piece of chicken. Mm. That's about a sample size right there. <laughs> what, this whole bowl? Just whole bowl. That's a sample size. A sample size? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to see if you'd say the blessing mm -hmm. for us. And I got us some cornbread in the mm -hmm. oven. My mouth was salivating coming down the road thinking about one more piece of cornbread. I told everybody how I was going to surprise you with these today. And then you called me and I said, sorry, I didn't answer the phone because mm -hmm. I was deboning chicken. I just blurted it out, <laughs> didn't I? And you mm -hmm. figured it out after that, didn't you? <laughs> i tell you what happened. I was expecting to turn at the red light yeah. at the courthouse. Yeah. And it dawned on me, I was like, she deboned a chicken. 
Hang on a minute. She's making chicken and dumplings. <laughs> when you said, are you making chicken and dumplings, I went. How do you know that? I know that. I forgot I said I was doing the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, that tastes wonderful. Good. Wonderful. 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 Dear Father, I just thank you for this meal. I thank you for the day, Lord. Lord, I just ask you just keep your hand upon us, Lord. Just keep us safe and the devil from us. Lord, please be with those soldiers over there. Just let this war in. Please. Lord, please be with our nation. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to have to have another bite. You're going to need, you gonna need a little bit more of that, baby. Well, got to have something waiting on the cornbread, mm -hmm. don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.